Uh, hello, everyone. Can you see my screen? This should be a big state of automation hub. Uh, yes. We okay, cool. Uh, so my name is David Newswinger. I'm the uh, private automation hub team lead. Uh, and I'm here with Shai Imai Doyle and Yuri Yaravik, um, who are two other software engineers on our team to uh, talk about Automation Hub. Um, all right, so this is what we're going to be covering. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is Automation Hub for the people who uh, aren't familiar. Um, then Yuri and Shai are going to give a quick demo. And then I want to talk about our roadmap and kind of future development and where we're taking the project. Um, and then hopefully we'll have enough time for some Q&A at the end. So first things first, um, a lot of you should be familiar with Automation Hub because we work pretty directly with a lot of uh, folks on the Pulp team. Um, but for those of you who aren't, um, Automation Hub is a content repository for basically all things Ansible. Um, we're, we're a Pulp plugin. We're sort of a weird Pulp plugin. We don't provide any content types on our own. Um, but we do integrate with a couple of other uh, Pulp plugins um, to provide the content that we need for Ansible. Um, so we distribute Ansible collections via Pulp Ansible and Ansible execution environments via Pulp Container. Um, Ansible collections, for those of you who don't know, are basically just a tarball full of all things Ansible. So Ansible roles, modules, uh, playbooks, et cetera. And execution environments, uh, if you're familiar with Ansible controller, <coughs> are just container images uh, with some Ansible binaries in them that are used to uh, run execution nodes in a controller cluster. Um, and then here at the bottom are our upstream repositories. So Galaxy NG uh, on uh, both of these are on um, uh, GitHub. Um, so there's our backend and uh, UI if you guys want to check that out. So some context on where Hub is used. Um, we've got sort of three areas that we focus on. Uh, the first is console.rehet.com, which is kind of the official location for certified Ansible collections that are written by Red Hat and our partners. Um, so we've got a list of about, I think it's around 50 or 60 partners um, from different companies that write Ansible collections and upload them to Automation Hub on console. Um, as well as collections that are provided by Red Hat and Ansible and other people within the company. Uh, so uh, you can check that out on, on uh, console.redhat.com. Um, and here's a, a screenshot from it on the left. Um, so this is kind of what Automation Hub looks like. The second place is it, this is also part of the Ansible Automation Platform, which is one of the SKUs that Red Hat sells. Um, <clears throat> Automation Hub is available as a, an on-premise service uh, that you can host in your local infrastructure um, to kind of manage all of your internal collections and execution environments. And then the third place, um, which is coming soon, is and I'll talk a little bit about this later, is galaxy.ansible.com. Um, which is currently running an older version of Galaxy, um, but we're working on updating that um, to use the Automation Hub code base. Uh, so with that out of the way, I'm going to pass it over to, Yira, to, to Shaya and Yuri um, to do a quick demo. Uh, Shaya is going to uh, talk about or do a demo of Ansible Collections and our implementation of Pulp RBAC, uh, and Yuri is going to focus on execution environments and the tasking UI. Uh, the demo will be mostly focused on the UI because uh, I think that's one of the more interesting things that Automation Hub brings to the table. And um, it's uh, something that I don't think a lot of you get to see too often. So I will pass it on to them. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Can everyone see the AutoHub UI OK? Yes. All right. So um, thanks, David. I'll be starting with a quick demo of collections and the RBAC system on AutoHub. And as you know, collections are kind of the centerpiece of what AutoHub is all about, providing customers with the content that's been created by our partners and then vetted and approved by partner engineers. So first, we can start by creating a namespace. Uh, I already have IBM. And then at uploading a collection via the UI. Now, as this collection version is uploading, the UI goes directly to um, the imports log, 
which shows messages from the Galaxy importer as it loads this metadata and also performs some tests. And as a new collection is uploaded, it's automatically moved into a repository called staging, where it stays until the collection is assigned and approved, at which time it moves into a published repository. So we can go to approval. Here's our collection. Uh, click sign and approve. And once that task is finished, the if we filter by the published repository, this collection is now it. Uh, we can go into it and look at some of the documentation. Here's the readme and the modules that were automatically um, imported uh, through the uh, Galaxy importer. And that's what one of them looks like. Um, uh, one more thing I'll do is sync uh, collections um, from console.redhat.com. So we can go to remote, and here's what the configuration looks like. I've already done this for the sake of saving a little bit of time in the demo, um, but you would uh, copy your token from CRC Connect to Hub, which is here. I won't load it right now. And then paste that into the token block. We'll get rid of these. Save it and then click sync. And then because I've already done that, I can go into collections, filter by the Red Hat certified repository, and here are all the collections that are synced from console.redhat.com. Um, so that's it for uh, the collections. I'll go on to just show a brief demo of our role based access control. We can create a custom role. which I'll call demo role, and then add some permissions. Save that. So now we have it in our list of roles right here. I'll go on to create a user. So that demo user. Create a password. Like that. And I'll create a group called the demo group. And then I can add my user to that group. And then access, I can add some roles. I can add the one that I just created, this custom role. And I can also add a role that already exists in the system, such as galaxy.contentadmin. Here are all the permissions uh, mapped to that role. Um, and so here's our group and both of the roles that you can expand like this to see their function. Um, and then I can go to a namespace and add object permissions to a namespace. So we can go to our RBM namespace, go to namespace owners, and then the logo, their permissions, add, and now we have um, this set of object permissions back to our namespace. So that's it for my portion of the demo, and I'll hand it over to you to continue with uh, execution environments. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Cool. So let me walk you through the execution environment part of the automation hub. Uh, so let's start with adding the remote registry. 
Uh, what is an execution environment? Uh, uh, so an execution environment is just a container image. That that's it's what? the pod container, basically. Uh, so, so what do you use it for? Like, what's the um, like purpose uh, of an execution environment? What's the purpose, yeah. Um, so execution environments are used by controller. Um, it's it's basically a container image that has a set of Ansible binaries in it that controller uses as a execution node. Um, so what you can do is you can load a set of Ansible collections that you want to provide to playbooks into your execution environment. And then the execution environment gets deployed on a server um, that is used by controller to run Ansible um, and connect to a bunch of different uh, servers. Does that make sense? I believe so. Let me retell that real quickly. Um, the execution environment allows a user to create a container with specific uh, collections in it. And then whenever it's executed, the collections are used to run some playbooks. Are the playbooks built into there also? No, so the environment provides all the libraries that the playbook needs. Um, and so what you would do is you'd create a controller project that has your playbooks um, and whatever other things you need, um, any extra roles. Um, and uh, then that project is run inside the execution environment, which has all the de dependencies that you need for it. Cool. Thank you. I just wanted some context for this. Yeah. OK, let me continue. Uh, so for the remote, I'll be using the quay.io. So let me set the URL. This is my credentials and my secret password. Uh, and that's it for the remote. We can set more advanced options here. Uh, for example, the proxy URL uh, that comes together with the proxy username or the proxy password. Uh, we can set the TLS validation to true. Or we can upload the client key, uh, client certificate, or the certificate authority file. Uh, we can also set the double on concurrency. So let me set this to 10. We can set the rate limit, uh, charge the request per second. So once we set up the remote, uh, we can add the remote. Uh, we can add the container repository. So for purposes of the demo, I'll be just uh, using the Alpine. So let me add the namespace slash the name of the container image. Uh, can select the registry that we set up. We can either include or exclude the text. So I want to sync only the latest tag. Uh, and let me hit the save. Here we can see the list of our execution environments. So let's go to the detail. And first thing we can do is we can sync from the registry. Uh, as we can see, this initialized uh, the syncing task. So we can take a look at this task. We can see here useful information that pops to us. So we can see the task detail, task group, the reserved resources. And on the right, we can see the progress messages uh, of the syncing. Uh, in case of an error, we can see the trace back here uh just of the errors so that can be pretty pretty useful uh and we can see the status batch here is completed so we can go back now and here we can see again that it's completed uh, here in the detail view uh, we can see the instructions for pulling this image we can enter the readme so we can type really anything here and uh, moving to the activity tab, here we can see the history of the container image. Can take a look at the images. Here we can see that we only sync the latest tag. So we can expand this view uh, and see the list of the digests and the OS and the architecture. We can also click on the digest to see again more detailed view. Uh, see the size here and the image layers that you can click through. And last thing uh, is the owner step that Shai already talked about. And this is for setting the permissions uh, and roles 
to this specific uh, container image. Uh, we can also edit this container uh, and we can sign it. We can delete it and sign it. So let's do that. So we can see again that the signing task has started and you can see here, I can zoom it. Uh, that's, it changed from the unsigned to signed. So now we can see that this is verified and signed uh, container image. And if you're curious about what's happening in our app or about the tasks, so we can go to the task management uh, where we can see all the tasks. You can see here that the sign task uh, that we initialized a few seconds ago was successfully completed. And you can see basically here everything that we did. We can go to the task detail uh, to see more information again. Uh, but since this was successfully completed, nothing really much here to see. And that's it from the execution environments part and the task management. Can we can we take a look at another task like the synchronized one? Is there more details on that one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's we a lot more it. project reports that are yeah. cool. Yeah, well, we are kind of in the task group, we can see the parent task, but it doesn't have any parent task and the and progress here. One thing that I would love to see added into the progress messages is the, the total number of tasks and the done number of tasks so that we can show progress bars in this progress messages area. So that's just one thing on my wish list. I mean, not the total of tasks, but the total of uh, content. Yes, reports. Yeah. Right. So with the continuer plugin, it will not be as easy because the content is discovered gradually during the sync because it has some sort of like an onion structure, because first you discover the text, then you discover manifest list, then you discover image manifest, then you discover blobs. So to be honest, I wouldn't know how to make it out of the box. That's why we don't have it yet. And maybe we'll never have it. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's a I very challenging the, task. The Ansel plugin has the same kind of problem. It's, it's something that I wish we had, but definitely not uh, super important. Yeah, and you know, if if we get to make it happen, I think you would need to sacrifice over some performance aspect as well. So, some trade. Or it can be a growing, like constantly growing total, like <laughs> not defined. In the it's a it's a reverse progress bar. It just gets longer. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so this UI looks awesome. Um, is there any plan to make it? more generalized or basically like i feel like what i just saw could be just used by the container plugin right to have a ui for just for having your little registry so yeah what are the plans with that um yeah i mean the, these just use the v3 um task apis so uh you could pretty easily grab these and use them on whatever ui you want um, we don't have any plans right now to make them available as a library. Um, and I think we might also be looking at redesigning this UI a little bit um, to be a little bit more consistent with some things in controller. Um, but yeah, this is something that that would totally work for uh, someone else. We don't use any special UIs here. Or sorry, special APIs. Cool. All right, I'm going to jump back into my presentation. That's OK. All right, uh, thank you for the demo. That was great. Um, let's see, we got about 10 minutes left, so five minutes, including Q&A. So I'm going to try to get through this. Uh, so next up is I would like to talk a little bit about our roadmap. Um, so we've got kind of three big things that I'd like to discuss with you guys. Um, the first one is repository management for collections. Um, we're also going to be looking at further integration with the Pulp APIs. And then I want to talk a little bit about the future of galaxy.ansible.com. Um, so as you might have noticed from Shia's demo, um, at the moment, we don't allow users to create or modify the repositories and remotes. Well, you can modify the remotes, but you can't create new remotes. Um, we, we ship with a specific set of repositories and remotes, um, and we sort of expect those to work for most of people's use cases. Uh, so our, the big thing that we're working on right now is opening that up. Um, so we'll be providing a CRUD view in the API for managing collection remotes and repositories. Um, 
And we're hoping that this will make the system quite a bit more flexible. Uh, right now, it kind of expects you to have a limited set of repositories. Um, but we're hoping that by opening this up, it'll uh, make this system a lot more usable for people because they can uh, kind of create their own custom repositories and curate their own uh, content into you know whatever buckets they want and then sync from a wider range of remotes um, and also maybe provide content to some of their customers as well. Yeah, like um, from so one this is, to another, right? Yeah. So yeah, you can you would be able to sync from multiple automation hubs within your organization, or if another customer wants to provide collections to uh, their customers, I know IBM wants to do this. Um, you'll be able to create custom remotes and repositories to pull content from those sources as well. Um, so this is something we're pretty excited about, um, and this is all going to be driven using the Pulp APIs. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna go over some mockups that we have for this real quick. Um, this is what the new uh, repository view will look like. Uh, you'll be able to page through all the repositories in the system. It won't just be limited to the five or six that we have now. Um, you'll be able to add new repositories. You'll be able to search for them, uh, all of that good stuff. This is what the new repository detail screen will be like. Um, so this is for creating a new repository. Uh, you can put in your description, tags, um, distributions, and all of that good stuff. Very similar to that, um, we've got the uh, new view for the remotes. Um, so same thing as, as before, you'll be able to see all the remotes in the system, add new remotes, page through the remotes, sort them, um, et cetera. And this is what our new form will look like. Um, one of the things that we're working on here is, is kind of making the visual presentation of Automation Hub um, a little bit closer to what Controller has. Um, so uh, we've got kind of this new design for the um, forms that has come to us from uh, the UX team. Um, so that's a very quick overview of what we're doing here. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is some further integration with the Pulp APIs. Um, so when, when we initially launched Automation Hub, it was just a service on console.redhead.com for distributing certified collections. And console.dot had this limitation where you could only serve APIs, uh, you, you could only provide APIs via a namespace for your application. So in our case, that was API slash Automation Hub. Um, and at the time, Pulp didn't allow us to change the API route. And so we ended up having to build a bunch of custom APIs off of the Pulp serializers and view sets um, to run the UI with. Uh, but in one of the previous versions of Pulp, um, you guys introduced a feature that allowed us to change the API route for the Pulp APIs. And now we can serve those APIs under the API slash automation hub um, kind of namespace on console.redhead.com. And this is this has allowed us to use all of the Pulp APIs directly, which is really great. Um, it's enabled us to build uh, UIs such as that tasking system that Yuri uh, demoed, and we're also going to be using it to drive the new CRUD views for remotes and repositories. Um, so we, we we currently ship the Pulp APIs as part of our supported API surface. If you go to the API route for Automation Hub, you'll see under Available Versions we have listed the Automation Hub v3 API, as well as the Pulp v3 APIs. Um, so those are available for uh, any user of Automation Hub to use. Um, so as, as we work on uh, kind of removing our customized APIs and, and integrating more with the supported Pulp APIs, um, we're going to be working on uh, adding some improvements um, to the Pulp APIs. So we'll specifically be focusing on uh, making them a little bit more data rich in some cases and adding better filtering uh, and so forth. Um, Yerka has had a, a couple of PRs. Um, I think the latest one he worked on was adding uh, information about hidden fields uh, to the APIs, which is uh, something that's very important for our UI. Um, so we'll be, you'll be seeing uh, further contributions from us um, on the full APIs as we, uh, as we work on repository management and uh, fixing up some of our old uh, deprecated API services. Awesome. So the, the last thing I want to talk about is the future of galaxy.ansible.com. Um, so work is underway to replace the old code base that's uh, currently powering Galaxy. Um, it's This thing was written years ago. Nobody's maintaining it. Um, our goal is to replace that with the current code base that we use for Automation Hub. Um, and so James Tanner has been working on adding role support there. We have a we have a, a 
a beta um, sort of POC demonstration available now um, on beta-galaxy.ansible.com if you want to check that out. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. Uh, Andrew and James gave a great talk at Ans the Ansible Contributor Summit a few weeks ago um, with kind of all of our plans and more information about this. Um, but I just wanted to say that you know work is on. Um, we're we're working on uh, replacing Galaxy, um, and we've got this beta uh, site available if anyone wants to check it out. So that is it for us. Um, thanks for your time, and yeah, I guess we'll open it up for questions or I don't know if you want to move on to the next presentation give people some uh, a little bit of a break well that was great thank you very much David uh Shai and Yirka are uh, yeah thanks a lot and it's it's great working with you guys so, yeah likewise we really, really appreciate you coming here um so if there are no questions. Uh, um, David, one quick ask. I don't think you mm -hmm. shared the slides on the on the schedule, so if you can do that, please. Yes, I was going to ask how to do that. Um, do I just send that to you, Tanya, or should I put it in the? Ideally, oh. we can upload it to the HackMD um, with the schedule. Yeah, put a link to the schedule in the chat here. And on your um, row on the right side, you can edit that link um, ah, to wonderful. your slides if they're publicly um, linkable. Uh, they are on the Red Hat Google Drive, so I don't know if that's a problem. That would be a problem. All right, I'll figure out how to share them. Yeah, we can sync up on that. Thank you, guys. Um, Daniel, I think we can stop the recording and.